Hello, I'm Matthew, and welcome to our YouTube channel. And welcome to my workshop. Please excuse the mess, lots goes on in here, as I'm sure you'll find out over the next coming weeks and months. Here we're interested in all things radio controlled that fly, and some full size too perhaps, and also making things. Please help us out by pressing the like, or better still, the subscribe button, so you'll find out first when we produce a new video. Now in these few episodes we're going to in investigate this kit. This is the VQ Models Douglas DC3 Dakota kit. We're going to put it together and then we're going to take it out, test flight and set it up. I hope you enjoy the programme. So this model is actually for my wife Gwen to fly. And it would make an excellent second or third model. For anyone that has any low wing or either on experience. And as it says on the box, it's suitable for electric or methanol power. And is available in either the military Skytrain scheme or the Lufthansa DC3 scheme. So this is the Lufthansa kit and we're going to build it as an electric setup. As you can see, all the parts here came well packaged or bubble wrapped. There's a full set of instructions there and also some decals. As you can see, it's all balsa and ply, and the, the covering, heat shrink covering, is pre printed with panel lines and such. So we'll get all this out of the box, we'll review the instructions, and we'll make a start. So now that we've got the parts out of the box, we can have a better look at them. And we can see that they're laser cut, lightweight balsa and plywood, covered in heat shrink film with the panel lines pre-printed on the covering. Now the good news is that despite this being 70 inches, almost 6 feet in span, or 1800 millimetres, the wing is arranged in three parts. So the centre section is designed to fit to the fuselage with just two bolts, you can get it off but it's designed to remain on the fuselage with the motors and landing gear for storage and transport which is quite convenient really and then the wingtips slide onto an aluminium tubular wing spar. The kit comes with a fixed landing gear but it's recommended really to fit the uh, VQ models retracting landing gear which is also available but not included in the kit. I must say now by the way that I'm not sponsored by VQ models or indeed anyone else and uh, this kit was bought with my own money so this is my own personal opinion of the kit. Now it's designed to run from a three cell LiPo battery however I'm planning to run this on a four cell system because I would prefer a little more voltage and less current so when it comes to the speed controllers, motors and propellers we're going to have to do our own thing but not to worry, there'll be more on that later. More good news, however, there's this large magnetic battery access hatch, and there's ample space in the battery compartment there to fit whatever battery we should, should choose to fly the model. So, the build of this almost ready to fly aircraft begins with a review of the instruction manual. The instructions for this model are quite clear, they're quite comprehensive but there are a few pointers here and there which could really use a bit of expansion particularly for the novice builder. I'm not going to give a blow by blow account of how this model is put together however where there are some pointers that could really use some expansion we'll go into a little more detail. So the construction starts with the wing centre section here we go and the cutouts to modify the wing centre section to allow the retracting landing gear. Now I've drawn in pencil here where the cuts actually should be. I've measured the width of the landing gear system supplied by VQ models and if you cut according to where the lines are drawn in the instructions the hole won't be big enough. So I've just marked this onto the centre section of the wings with a sharpie just so and we're going to cut this out with a razor saw. So I've lifted the wing section up on this section of foam so that I don't mark anything and we're going to cut this out here with the razor saw. So here
And there we go. And we're also going to open up the slots. Difficult to see on film maybe, but for the um, nacelle structure. These razor saws are really handy. They're inexpensive, but they are essential tools really for the construction of model aircraft. Again, a good sharp hobby knife is an essential tool for the workshop really. Well, very carefully clear the covering away from the slots. So this is all standard, almost ready to fly ARTF fare really. So here, before we reach for the glue, and we've cleared out the slots and I've just eased them a little with a permagrip file. And now we're just going to dry fit the nacelle structure to the wing centre section. Uh, be very careful doing this, there's a left and a right, they are carefully labelled and um, there is a, a mark which is etched in with the laser cutting with the kit that shows you how to line them up. Uh, it suggests gluing these with CA or super glue to you and I. Uh, however, I would much prefer a slow setting epoxy for this glue. And what's very up uh, for this joint, um, what's very, very important is that both nacelles are both lined up nice and true and square to the wing centre section and also with each other. So we'll do that first, we'll mix up the epoxy and then we'll clamp it all so it's nice and straight while it cures. So here we are with the parts now clamped, all set up, waiting for the epoxy to cure. So you saw there how I made the, these uh, small balsa infill wedges by angling the table on the bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw you could of course use the razor saw that we used earlier and a sanding block and a bit of scrap balsa. So these parts are not included in the kit, however they add a tremendous amount of strength to the firewall to nacelle joint for very little increase in weight and once the glue is completely cured we'll just trim uh, these back with a sanding block uh, so that they fit within the cowl. Other to that, now we have to wait for the glue to dry. So join us next time where we'll move on, we'll do a bit of wiring, perhaps install the landing gear, a few servos and the motors to the centre section. Please remember to press that like or subscribe button so that you don't miss our next episode. Tune in next time.